Welcome to Medical Edge. My name is Todd Barnes. This program is produced as a partnership between the Mayo Clinic and the City of Thornton. We hope every episode provides valuable health information for you and your family. Oh my God, I mean, he's just a baby. Now he's huge. David Gerfast is an animal lover. That's my buddy Max. He's a lap dog. He's a big time sports fan and a fighter. He says, Mom, I got this. I got this. I'm going to beat this. I got this. And to hear that out of a 12 year old is just amazing to me. As I'm just bawling like a baby, not knowing how to take this, that my boy has cancer. Didn't hurt at the time, not till after the game. Well, he was playing football, seventh grade football game, and he got hurt. So they ended up doing a full MRI all the way up into his neck, and that's when they found the tumor. The tumor is this white mass that's both in front of the spine, in the middle of it, and pushing on the spinal cord as well. David had an extra osseous chordoma, which is a slow-growing but relentless tumor. Mayo Clinic neurosurgeon Dr. Michelle Clark removed David's tumor and reconstructed the severe damage it had caused to his vertebrae. But his doctors worried stray tumor cells might still pose a threat. For this type of tumor, uh, there aren't a lot of other treatments. Once we realized we could not take it out in one piece, we knew that David had to go for proton beam therapy. Proton therapy is a massive step forward in radiation therapy. X-rays were discovered back in 1896, and one of the first uses was the treatment of cancer, destroying the DNA, the genetics of the cancer cells that uh, prevent them from growing and spreading and eventually cause them to die. They'll damage the tumor, but they can also potentially damage a lot of healthy tissue on its track to and from. We can't control where x-rays stop. Protons are completely different. Which explains the excitement surrounding Mayo Clinic's new $180 million proton beam facility. To understand how it all works, we start with the protons, which are basically hydrogen atoms from water that are given a positive charge. That charge allows them to be controlled by a sophisticated series of magnets burst in a device called a synchrotron, which accelerates the protons up to two-thirds the speed of light, then fires them down the line to any one of four patient treatment rooms. Doctors can control how deeply protons penetrate the body by how much energy they give them. They'll go a set distance, they'll stop, and you'll have a sudden explosion of the energy, and so you'll treat the tumor, but very little normal tissue surrounding it. Mayo Clinic's proton beam facility features spacious treatment rooms with robotic patient tables and three-story tall 110-ton gantries that rotate around the patient to direct the proton beam. Between the 180-degree gantry and the a robotic patient positioner, we can send the radiation beam into the patient at the target from, from any angle possible. Allowing doctors to sculpt the radiation therapy even more precisely in order to protect healthy tissues surrounding the cancer is technology called intensity modulated pencil beam scanning. The smaller the beam, the more accurate and precise it is. If you think of a um, tumor like a, a picture in a coloring book, uh, the sharper your crayon is, the easier it is to stay within the lines of the colors. And we'll have the smallest size beam available in the world, uh, the most accurate, most precise. And once again, the properties of protons allow them to be delivered in a way that maximizes their lethal impact on cancerous tumors. Since they have a positive electrical charge, we can use magnets to move the beam back and forth and up and down to radiate the entire volume of the tumor. Sometimes we'll give more dose than you could with x-rays and that allows us to cure cancers that you couldn't with x-ray therapy. Which brings us back to David. It takes like 10 minutes. It's really quick. It's awesome. With a fitted mask to immobilize his head, David received 43 treatments. His radiation exposure plan shows how the highest dose was concentrated at the tumor site, while vital arteries, his spinal cord and esophagus were avoided as much as possible. On average, we can drop the dose to the normal healthy tissues by typically 70 to 80 percent. Eight weeks later, the finality bell signaled David's last treatment and 
a family's gratitude for the hope delivered by a beam of protons. Oh, I think it's phenomenal. It's amazing how it has come this far. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Dennis Dota. The strength in my legs and arms are they're bouncing back, getting more and more independent each day. She's been very brave and very courageous, and I just admire her a lot. To me, she's my hero. I'm stubborn. <laughs> if that's true, then it's a trait that has served Courtney Kidd well through a lifetime of medical challenges. She's among the very first people in the world to receive a double organ transplant in a way that was very likely her only chance to survive. It was a case of we can't transplant the liver alone because the heart wouldn't be able to cope or we couldn't transplant the heart alone because the liver wouldn't be able to cope. So when she was born, the first few hours everything was okay. But then the nursery nurse noticed that her um, earlobes were turning blue. Courtney arrived in the world as a very sick little girl with five congenital heart defects. No tricuspid valve and no right ventricle. So only three chambers to her heart and then her aorta and her pulmonary artery were transposed, called transposition of the great arteries. Surgery saved Courtney's life, but there would be more heart operations ahead at age two and six. Another at age 12 led to severe complications and a catastrophic brain hemorrhage. She fought her way through memory loss and another open heart procedure at age 22, but still she managed to get her college degree in childhood development. She proved everybody wrong, as she always does. Courtney became a preschool teacher and earned her license to provide foster care, but within a few years her scarred heart deteriorated and a cascade of complications essentially destroyed her liver. I was getting weaker and I was on oxygen all the time. Courtney was told organ transplant was not an option. Numerous blood transfusions over the years had caused her immune system to develop high levels of antibodies, which would attack and reject foreign tissues. Yet she needed both a new heart and a new liver. And in a sense, that provided us with an opportunity. The liver seems to have the ability to, in very simple terms, mop up antibodies. We've been doing combined heart livers for a long time, but the traditional approach is always to put the heart in first. Instead, surgeons have found that by putting the liver in first, patients don't seem to have any cellular or antibody-related rejection. The novel concept worked. I just want to emphasize that this is very much a team approach between our heart transplant group and our liver transplant group in addition to the excellent care she's received in the um, ICU. While her recovery wasn't easy, Courtney's determination was evident through physical and occupational therapy. I have a new heart and there's things I want to do. Courtney talks of running distance races and cycling, but she's willing to start slow. At the Gift of Life transplant house, she was happy to get to dive back into baking again with her lifelong best friend, her mom. Just amazing. I mean, you know, we went from her probably having a year to live, if that, to now being given a whole new life. So there's just nothing that she's not going to be able to accomplish and do now. Each day is a new day, and it's precious and Make the best of it. Find the positive in it. For the Mayo Clinic News Network, I'm Dennis Dota. That's it for this episode of Medical Edge. To learn more about the stories featured on this program, you can find additional resources by visiting our website and following the link to the Mayo Clinic. Thanks for watching, and be sure to watch the next episode of Medical Edge.